At the gallop! Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier, the saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire, and the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Sergeant Gorse, dismiss the patrol. Yes, sir. Prepare to dismount. Dismount. Welcome back, Captain. Thank you, Sergeant Jenkins. Major Daggett in? He's been expecting you. Come in. Oh, Lee. Glad you're back. That makes both of us, Major. Are you find anything? No trouble. Some of the dog soldiers are restless. But so far, no Sioux have left treaty territory. Oh, that's good. Yep. Except I've had a ten-day ride for nothing. Well, there's no matter. We have to investigate every report. You know that. I know. Well, like I said, I'm glad you're back. But I'm not sure you'll be. Why? You're in time to welcome an old friend of yours. Oh? Huh? Who? His orders read Lieutenant... R.C. Went. Robbie? That's right. Major Went. He is signed here? He's on the post already. He arrived an hour ago. He'll be reporting any minute. Want to stay and see him? You want me to? It's up to you. You'll have to face him sooner or later anyway, I suppose. Major, he's an old friend. Nothing can change that. You still feel that way? Yep. Where will he be assigned? C Company is short an officer. I thought... Can I have him? You can transfer Hancock to C. Why? Maybe I can ease things a little. What about yourself? You think he'll like serving under you, an officer who once served under him? He'll do all right. He's a good officer. Well, I can't say much for him now. Five posts in two years, and he couldn't face it out at any of them. Now we're stuck with him. A drunkard, a troublemaker, and a coward. Coward of Antelope Meadows. I'm not sure he deserves that reputation. The court of inquiry that demoted him thought so. They demoted him for poor judgment, not cowardice. What would you call a man who ran away from a fight, left his commander and 200 men to be wiped out? He was under attack himself. He could have fought through to Bartlett and saved them. Maybe and maybe not. He might only have added 100 more men to the list of dead. Instead, he tried to save his own command and he succeeded. Oh. It was a difficult decision, but not necessarily bad judgment. The court of inquiry said so. The court of inquiry was in Washington. They went by the book. You know how different it can be out here, how hard a decision can be when you're under attack. Uh, hindsight's always easy. Uh, why are we arguing? Assign him to me. All right. Be a good Samaritan if you have to. Uh, there he is. Come in. Lieutenant Went reporting to Major Daggett as directed. Yes, been expecting you, Went. I uh, believe you know Captain Quince. Hello, Robbie. Captain. It's been a long time since Virginia. Yes. Sorry I didn't see you. I've developed a habit of speaking when I'm spoken to. You're looking well. Major, have you uh, figured out a place for me? I didn't try to figure a place for you, Went. You're just another officer here. You'll be put where you're needed. I've assigned you to B Company. That's Captain Quince here. 
Very well. You can report to the officer of the day at your convenience. You'll be placed on active duty as of 5 a.m. tomorrow. You'll take morning call. Yes, sir. We hope you'll have a pleasant tour, Laramie. Do you, Major? Went. I said you're just another officer here. That's the way you'll be treated. But I expect a cooperative attitude from you like any other officer. A chip on that shoulder won't help. Very good, Major. Am I dismissed? Yes. I'll, uh, I'll come along if I may, Robbie, show you the place. All right, Captain. Oh, Lee. Yes, sir? One moment, huh? I'll uh, be right with you, Robbie. All right. You see what I mean? Liquored up, middle of the day. He's going to be trouble. He's gone through a lot, Major. Sometimes I think you're a soft fool. I'm warning you, Lee, don't try to fight his battles for him. Keep a tight hold on him. Don't worry. I'll take you over by the quarters, Robbie. They're a little better than the ones we had in Virginia. You might like Laramie. It's a good post. I've noticed a lot of women. More than I expected out here. A lot of the men are married. It's safe enough here. It's good to see you, Robbie. It is? We had some good days in Virginia. <laughs> I was your commanding officer then. You were a good one. Now... <laughs> Robbie, there are plenty of gray-haired lieutenants in this army for one reason or another. But not many of them cry in their beer. Thank you, Captain, for reminding me. Oh, you've got to give people a chance. What about them giving me a chance? Oh, you've got to meet them halfway, Robbie. Halfway. Good morning, Captain Quince. Oh, hello, Miss St. Cloud. May I present Lieutenant Went? We don't need an introduction, Captain. Hello, Robbie. Mrs. St. Cloud. It's good to see you. Thank you. I saw you earlier crossing the parade ground. What brings you to Laramie? I'm to be stationed here. Oh, I'm very glad. Are you? Of course. Captain, Robbie and I are old friends. Well, you must come and visit me the first chance you get, Robbie. Thank you. Oh, here's Philip. You never met my husband, did you? Philip, this is Robbie Went. Lieutenant St. Cloud, how do you do? He's to be stationed here. That's too bad. Philip. You remember Lieutenant Yeager, don't you, Went? He was my best friend, my roommate at the point. I'm sure you must remember him because he died with Bartlett that day at Antelope Meadows. Philip, don't. Come along, Maud. But, Philip. What were you saying about a chance, Captain? I'm sorry, Robbie. There's bound to be some feeling at first, but in time... You're I... an optimist, Captain. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll stop by the sutlers. They can still sell liquor on this post, can't they? You think that'll help? It's the only help I need, Captain. Good day. First platoon, all prisoner accounted for. Second platoon, all prisoner accounted for. All prisoner accounted for, sir. Yeah. Yeah. No. <clears throat> where, where are the orders? In your pockets. Uh, in my... Uh, Lieutenant, is there anything wrong? What do you mean, Sergeant? I mean, are you all right? Are you feeling all right? Of course I am. No. where is he? Here, sir. Shall I read him? You? Captain Quint sometimes has me read him, sir. I, I just thought... Uh, you stop thinking, Sergeant. Lieutenant... I'm perfectly capable... Morning, Lieutenant Went. Sergeant Gorse. Sir. What are you doing here, Quince? Don't you think I can take morning call by myself? Of course, Lieutenant. I'm perfectly all right. Absolutely all right. I'm not so sure. I think you'd better go back to your quarters. I'll relieve you here. Is that an order, Captain? That's a suggestion. All right. Straighten up, man. You're in front of a hundred enlisted men. Yeah, uh, it'll be all right. I... I'll go with you. I can... It's a long walk across the parade ground. The men are watching. Just keep your shoulder into mine. Sergeant, you'll read the orders of the day. Yes, sir. Come on, Robbie. Yeah. 
Here, keep this cold compress on your head. Mm, thanks. Robbie, this is no good. You can't keep this up. What? Running away, hiding in a bottle. Uh, you gonna report me? Did you report me that time in Virginia? But it can't happen too often, you understand that. I know. Well, Lee, thanks. You're the only one in two years that's been decent. I'm sorry if I can't come halfway. Maybe if you try to face it and not run away. Other men have been busted. Oh, it's not that. No. Do you know what my second-in-command said after Antelope Meadows? He said, we should all be dead. And we would have been if we hadn't been led by a coward. You weren't a coward in Virginia, and when that court of inquiry demoted you, you didn't have to stay in the army. You could have resigned. Yes. It took guts to stay. That wasn't the act of a coward. I love the army. It's my life. And I was mad. I thought I was right. I had the guts then. Then what's happened? Do you know what it's like to be sneered at? Hated wherever you go? To be blamed for other men's deaths? Like that St. Cloud yesterday, I've had two years of that, Lee. Maybe now I am a coward. Not unless you're willing to be. If you... Come in. Oh, Miss St. Cloud. Robbie, I I heard you were ill. Word gets around, doesn't it? Are you all right? All right. You'll be fine, ma'am. Is there anything I can do for you, Robbie? Oh, no. Thanks. Well, I'll stop in again this afternoon. I am not so sure your husband would approve, Mrs. St. Cloud. Robbie, if you won't or can't come to visit me, I'll come to visit you. Good day, Captain. Ma'am? It seems you do have friends, Lieutenant. You, Maud. Well, Lee... Was I wrong? About what? Antelope Meadows. I don't know. It tortures me, Lee. You did what you thought was right. Now, right or wrong, you better forget it. How could a man forget a thing like that? I don't know, Robbie. a small detachment to patrol the line. We've had no further reports, but I want to keep watch. What about Syberts and eight men, Lee? Why not... Why not Went? What's the matter? Want to get him away from the post? No, it's not that. It might be what he needs. I'm not sure I trust him with a patrol. You think you fooled me with that relieved of duty because of illness? He's just about drunk the sutler's dry. He's getting better lately. That's not what I hear. Maybe he's not drinking quite so much, but... But what? I've heard reports about him and Mrs. St. Cloud. They've been seeing each other entirely too much. She's been seen going into his quarters. She tended him when he was ill. And he's been at her rooms when St. Cloud was away. They're old friends. Maybe. But I always did think that woman was too pretty. Major, I don't think there's anything wrong. But if there is, all the more reason to send Wendt out in that patrol. You trust him? He's a good officer. I'll send Gorse with him. All right, Lee. I just hope you're right. Send Went to me for orders. Right away, sir. Captain. Captain. What's the matter, Sergeant? Over at Old Bedlam. There's going to be trouble. What trouble? The two lieutenants. St. Cloud's gone looking for Went. Thanks. Cloud? I heard what's been going on behind my back. It's all over the post. He can't get by fooling around with my wife. I'll That's kill enough. 
That's a court-martial offense you're charging. You want to make it official? I certainly... And subject your wife to the embarrassment of it? No. All right. No. When? Do you want to prefer charges against him? No. Then the two of you remember your officers in the U.S. Cavalry and act accordingly. He better stay away from my wife. You won't have to worry about that for a while. He's going out on patrol tonight. Now, get out of here, St. Cloud. Lee. I don't want to hear about it. It's none of my business. But, Lee, there's no... You got a job to do. As soon as you clean up, report to the Major for your orders. All right, Captain. Captain? Yes? Captain, I heard you... No harm done, Miss St. Cloud. Except to the dignity of a couple of officers. It's my fault. I should have known Philip wouldn't understand. But I want you to understand, Captain. Why me? Because you're his friend, too. All right. I was only trying to help him. We're old friends, yes, but... Once it was more than that. Once, before I met Philip, it was going to be Robbie. I couldn't just stand by and see this happening to him. I see. Did I do wrong, Captain? Uh, who's to say that, Miss St. Cloud? I don't know. Oh, I wish I were wiser. So do I, ma'am. So do I. Lee, this report just came in from the telegraph at Cheyenne. Trouble, Major? A Sioux raiding party attacked the railroad. If they're not still in the vicinity, they'll be heading north. Wentz moving to intercept Wentz? them. Yeah, he stopped at Pine Bluff and got the news. But he'll need reinforcements. Might be a big party, we don't know. Besides, with Went in charge... I can have B Company ready in an hour. Oh, will that be enough? B's undermanned. You've only got 63 men. It'll be enough. All right. Rendezvous with Went at the Forks on Little Bear Creek. And Lee, don't take any chances. Carry 200 rounds per man. This could be a fight. Captain, single rider approaching. Yeah, I see him. Looks like Gorse. Keep him going, Mr. Cybert. I'll swing out and meet him. Yes, sir. Sergeant? Captain, Lieutenant Went sent me to intercept you. He's moving towards Horse Creek. He wants you to cut across and meet him. All right, good. Sure glad you're here, Captain. Why? Well, we had him cornered last night, but they got away. We could have taken him. How many? Around 30. Nine men against 30? We could have surprised him. The men are kind of talking, son. What are you trying to tell me, Gorse? The lieutenant wouldn't attack. Or couldn't. Had he been drinking? Yes, sir. Was he drunk, Sergeant? Well, no, sir. I couldn't say that. Then think about this, Sergeant. You men might not be alive today if he had attacked. Yes, sir. I've heard that before. It's still true, Sergeant. All right, let's join him. Signal, Captain. Here comes the lieutenant to meet us. Company! Company! Fall! Lieutenant! They're down in the valley about a mile ahead, Captain. You can surround them by splitting your force in three. Good. All right, Cybert, you take 20 men and the right flank. Yes, sir. 
Sergeant Gorsh, you'll take 12 more men and join with Lieutenant Wentz patrol on the left flank. Yes, sir. The rest will stay with me in the center. Uh, I'd like the center, Captain, if I may. Why? It's closer. It'll lead the attack. I found them. All right. I'll take the left. Sergeant Jenkins, take over. I'll join you in a minute. Now, move out. Right, sir. Yes, yes sir. Good work, Lieutenant. And you used good judgment. Not attacking last night. Did I? Here, Captain, have a drink. Yeah, thanks. Why'd you do that? You don't need it. You've gotten your courage out of a bottle for so long, you think you have to have it. Don't I? No, you don't, Robbie. All right, Lieutenant Went. Move out. Doesn't look like we'll get much fighting, sir. No, Jenkins, we're pretty far away, but we'll block this end of the valley for them. Yes, sir. There they go, sir. All right. Company! Company! At the trot! At the trot! Ho! We got him rounded up, Captain. Wasn't much of a fight. When they saw us coming in from three sides, they just dropped everything and ran. Good. Any casualties? No, sir, I don't think so. Not a one. Captain! Huh? Over here. Casualties, sir. Lieutenant Wint. Robbie? Lee, I am sorry you smashed that bottle now. Garth, Holder's bringing the first aid, sir. No, no use, Lee. No use, you know that. Robbie, I'm sorry. Yeah, so am I. About a lot of things. Maud St. Cloud... A lot of things. With Lee, there's one thing I'm not sorry about. Antelope Meadows? Yeah. I was right, Lee. I couldn't have saved Bartlett. But I could save my hundred men, and I didn't. That's right. Oh, only one thing nobody understands... It wasn't my own life I was thinking about. I understand that, Robbie. Do you, Lee? Thanks. Oh, I wish... I wish... Captain. What is it, Sergeant? I saw it, sir. He deliberately cut in front of Holder and took the only bullet the engines fired. He saved Holder's life. I guess I was wrong, sir. Were you, Sergeant? Yes, sir. He was no coward. No? No, he wasn't. <laughs> Come in. Oh. Miss St. Cloud. Captain? I've just been over to see you. 
I won't be attending the services. I understand. Captain. Yes? Captain, did he... Did he say anything about me? Yes, he did, Miss St. Cloud. He said he was sorry. Not half as sorry as I am, Captain. I wanted to help him. But I was afraid to say the one thing that might have helped him most. Sometimes it's kind of hard to... I wanted to tell him that... that he was the only man I ever really loved. But I... I was afraid of the consequences. I should have told him, Captain. I should have told him a long time ago. Well... Philip will be wondering where I am. Good day, Captain. Good day, Miss St. Cloud. Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by John Dunkel, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Jack Moyles, Harry Bartell, Lynn Allen, Paul Duboff, and Clayton Post. Company tension. Dismiss. Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. headlines knows no time or place. News can be made next door or halfway around the world at noon, at midnight, or in this next minute. To keep you fully informed, CBS News has reporters on 24-hour duty all around the world. By the magic of radio, their reports come to the CBS Newsroom to be transmitted to you. Right now, every Saturday and Sunday, CBS News reports to you almost every hour during the day and evening. By keeping your dial set at CBS Radio, you know the news from halfway around the world as soon as you get the news from next door.